Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I have the awesome Lisa London on here. Welcome to the show, and thank you for coming on. Hi. Hope everybody had a great 4th of July. Oh, yeah. How are you doing now? I'm doing great. I mean, uh, we, you know, we, we've discussed this. It's interesting. I think a lot of artists are doing weirdly well in the sense that we're thriving as far as our creative juices flowing and the time to do different projects and um, that and get back to other forms of art that we love. Like I also sketch and I write poetry. I've been doing that since this whole thing started. And I've been very blessed with like a lot of movies about, you know, to drop right when this happened and they're all out now streaming and getting great reviews and it's pretty cool. And I've been blessed to be able to shoot something actually, even during this because of the really innovative, cool way that the director and uh, writer Gregory Hatanaka and Nicole D'Angelo, they figured out, they wrote the script about how the mental uh, things, the mental issues everyone's having from the quarantine and from the virus. And so it was basically this isolated thing of where it's a giant chat room. And when, when you see the people in their real life, then mm -hmm. that you don't realize that the camera's still on and that it goes into their private life and it's just really cool and i'm so excited about that it's called girl in quarantine and that's um going to be coming out on amazon prime and 2b tv awesome. in about two weeks but i've got a whole bunch of stuff running right now which is pretty cool that's awesome and i like how you said a lot of artists and creators are really getting into their things like right now because it's we really have nothing else to do. I, exactly. And, and it's, it's also, it's so strange because, I mean, we're even the most private um, actor or writer, there's still like this social element of going out into the world. And when that's cut off too, it makes you dig deeper inside about mm -hmm. your goals and, and what you, you want to say. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting time, definitely. I still want it to be over, like, fast, oh, yeah. but I have been making the best of it, I must say. Definitely. Yeah, I've, I've definitely adjusted to it. Like, I work I work for the state, so that right now they're paying me to stay home and do nothing, but I know soon, within the next week or two, I don't even know when, I'll be working from home, which is still cool. But, I mean, it's made, I've been, I think I've done at least 40 episodes, if not more. I didn't put them all out, obviously. Wow recording editing that is prolific yes <laughs> trying to get because i'm like i'm never gonna have this time again to just i know i know when stuff gets back to you know going back to work just going back to work every day is going to change a lot yes absolutely but absolutely i might as well do this now while i can and i enjoy doing it and it's awesome meeting cool people like yourself and it's it's it sucks in a way, yeah. It it does have its downs, like as far as the people getting sick and dying, that part sucks. Of course, of course. The, take the positive out of it. You can work. Everybody can work on their crafts. Exactly. I mean, it's like I mean, basically, we're having this wonderful, real discussion 
in America and in the whole world because of us leading mm -hmm. about racism also. And it's just, I don't think if all the elements of, of this pandemic and, and this world togetherness vibe, mm -hmm. I don't think that if that wasn't there, that we would have had this real woke moment, literally, internationally, of people going, enough, it's ridiculous. What the fuck? I mean, the color of our skin doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything except that that's how you were born. And I really think we're having a rebirth as a nation to finally address it. I mean, I hope and pray. I just hope and pray. But And, and I'm also so proud of the fact that just it's so weird too. like everything I've been involved with has been so multicultural, cultural and multiracial and inclusive and about gender and, and sexuality and skin color. So I think the world is trending towards being a better place. And I really honestly have hope. I have hope yeah, a lot I'm in, of it. <laughs> I'm in that same boat with you. I mean, you really hope yeah, baby. Yeah. You're right about the whole, like if this whole pandemic didn't happen, a lot of this stuff would still be overlooked or ignored. Like Exactly, exactly. But now it's like, I don't think, I think more so it's like, uh, you know, you have your regular nine to five, you know, your regular nine to five job, you have your regular life going on. So yeah. you, it's not that you're ignoring it, but it's like, you don't have time to really sit down and process it, especially if it's someone that doesn't really, if it doesn't affect you. Mm -hmm. But then when you, when you're, it's like, okay, the government, pretty much the whole world, stay home, don't do nothing. You're, all you have to do is watch TV, social media, right. that kind of stuff. Right. And, it. and it was like, holy shit. Some people are just like, wow, this is really, this is really going on. Like, I thought people were just talking exactly. Like, no, this is really going on. Now, exactly. Exactly. It, the, the, I think, the, actually, I think the great thing about it is it's bringing out the good in people and it's bringing out the bad in people because I feel like it's showing people's true colors. Yeah. It's almost like it's, you know, the the Wizard of Oz and the curtain's been pulled back. And if you're going to believe the wizard or if you're going to believe facts and the reality about life and so many ways about so many different issues, I think that it's definitely that moment, you know, where you have to, you have to wake up and you have to realize the truth about things. And I think most people, I, I believe in our better angels. I believe most people are, are good and it's definitely on the road to improvement. Oh yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with you. But like I said, you see you see people's true colors, good or bad. Yep. I do like how with the bad, they're getting called out. I love, I, it might sound bad, but I love how a lot of them are losing opportunities, losing. Oh, totally. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and, and that is a pun about hashtag me too, because, uh, hey, hashtag me too really started all of this too. So, yeah, I think, you know, it's time to stand up for what's right and not accept and not be silent about what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely true. And I mean, some people say, "Oh, you know, they shouldn't lose it." But I'm like, "Hey, don't spend money there if you don't want to." Exactly. Instead exactly. of trying to fist fight them all the time, because that that doesn't that doesn't do much. That's what I try to tell yeah. my friend, like friends and family. Like, Listen, instead of punching these people in the face, just let them show their true colors. If they post something, share it. Let their job see it. Let people who go to their companies and businesses see it. So I'll true. I'll hurt them way worse than punching them in the mouth. Punching them in the mouth is gonna hurt for an hour. Yeah, violence doesn't. But violence never solves anything except it, it creates more a worse situation. Exactly. Or just more violence. If you look at the world's history, you know, as we're about ready to talk about all my horror films and violent films and sexual and what makes the world go wrong, round, right? <laughs> Very true. We could dive right into that, and I'll say as far as horror goes, just because I'm, I've been doing this for a little bit, well, two years, a little over two years now. And meeting so many different people, the horror community is so freaking beautiful and welcoming, and nobody cares your your race, your gender. I know. Are into with just like we're all horror fans, <laughs> and, and and it's funny. It's a genre that no matter what else is going on, uh, it's always there, and it's and it always has fans, and it will always do well. And it's very interesting. It. Um, I came late to the party of horror movies and I'm so glad I did. And it's just so much fun, so much fun to, to be scared. And I, I still know when I go see my own scary movies, I watch them with my hands over my eyes, but I do love them. They are fun. I love, I, I love watching them, reviewing them. I love meeting people about them. It's, it's just, I think it's the best genre because you can literally go in any direction without being wrong. Now it might not be for you, but you can have a romantic. Exactly. Movie. You can have a comedy horror. You can have your regular scary horror and any. Exactly. And not exactly. be wrong. Yep. And that's, what I, that's one thing I love about it. And I, I mean, I've been watching it for 
most of my life now. So I just, I can't get enough of it. And it's just, I want more. <laughs> I want more. And I love how there's like a lot of independent people coming out doing horror movies because you get some fresh ideas. Yes. Yes. And yeah. It's, well, that's, like, that's my whole world. Independent film. I mean, I've done, you know, quite a big A-list films and, and television shows, but the independent world of film is, has been my bread and butter and my the basis of my career. And I love it. And I just love it. And it's really um, getting better and better all the time now too. So which ones do you want to talk about first? Um, right here. Body of the night. Okay. okay. Body of night. Okay. So body of night is one. I, 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 so blessed. I'm working with a director by the name of Gregory Hatanaka, and he's basically created like an Orson Welles community group of actors and crew that he uses over and over again. And we're like family. It's almost like being in a theater company. Um, we're so comfortable with each other. We can like read each other's minds. And I think that that's why the chemistry is so good now with everybody. And then we've brought in tons of new young actors that have become part of our troupe in the last couple of years. And um, so Body of Night is kind of like um, a spoof on Fifty Shades of Grey, but with a lot of darkness and humor, but it, it and fabulous music, which is a staple of all of Greg's stuff. And um, he uh, created this amazing world of about this fantasy kind of club, and it, you just have to see it. To, it's it's wonderful. And that's on Amazon Prime and Tubi. And then also Choke is on Amazon Prime and Tubi, which is behind you right now. And Choke is a fabulous kind of existential um, ode to all the European indie films where you are basically asked to just let your mind go and go along for the ride. And I'm really thrilled with that, that it, it, it was in the top 10 of Amazon Prime's movie to watch, like within two days of, of uh, starting to starting to stream mm -hmm. and I also co-produced that one and I'm super proud of that movie and that's doing great and then another one a great comedy written by um, and directed by a female Nicole D'Angelo and that's called Acrylic and it's about dueling nail salons and a, a childhood rivalry that goes really bad but it was really interesting during the whole shutdown how acrylic was so relevant because it was all about the nail salon industry and everybody was missing getting their mammy and petties really badly so i urge everyone to watch that acrylic it's also on amazon prime and uh 2b tv and uh oh um Acrylic, Heartbeat, Choke. Oh, and then Heartbeat is um, kind of a film noir murder mystery that I just did, also with the same group, Gregory Hatanaka. And that um, is on Vimeo On Demand, but that'll also be on Amazon Prime and to be very soon. And then the one we did um, during the quarantine was called Girl in Quarantine, and it addresses the mental issues, like I said, about... Um, what everyone's going through during this time. And it was really cool because I was like isolated, the only actor on set, everything that you're going to see is actually a green screen. And then we shot all the other scenes from individual homes because it's supposed to be a big Zoom chat room. So that was really cool. And I'm getting ready to do another one with Gregory soon. Um, and I think I'm doing another horror film with Rich Mallory, who's a partner of Gregory Hatanaka's at their Cine Ridge and Cinema Epic companies. And I did Holy Terror uh, for Rich Mallory, and that's on Amazon Prime, and it's streaming like everywhere also. And that's one, that's one of my favorite um, horror film, scary movie. I, I play kind of like a psychic, but you don't know if she's good or bad. <laughs> and uh, Holy T Terror is just great. It's got just the right amount of humor and super scary. And the first um, horror uh, slasher film I ever did was called Blood Ranch. And it's really, really scary. I mean, I, I still can barely watch it. <laughs> and Blood Ranch is directed by Corbin Timbrook, who I also just did a super scary uh, movie called Why?, and that's not out yet, but that's incredible. And then I did another one for him that went to the Cannes Film Festival called Do You See Me? And um, that was in theaters, but I think it's going to be streaming pretty soon also. But those are my Corbin Timbrook movies. And then I've also done a bunch of scary movies for David Dakota. 
And um, the first one was Three Wicked Witches. And I am evil incarnate in that. <laughs> and then I did 666 Devilish Charm also. And that was a lot of fun as well. And another one that I just did for David Dakota, it's not a horror film, but it's The Wrong Teacher. He's got a whole slew of the wrong girlfriend, the wrong husband, the wrong cheerleader, the wrong teacher. And that's the one I'm in. And that's on the Lifetime channel. And that's on all the time. Oh, nice, nice. So you got a lot a lot going on. Though. That's good, though. I know, right? I'm very, I'm def I definitely want to watch a lot, especially the horror ones. I'm just like, oh, they, they all sound fun. They all sound like an yeah. entertaining Blood they Rain are. You had me at Slasher with that. I was so Slasher. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of slashing in almost all the movies I've got out right now. <laughs> slashing, choking, hey. You know, a, a girl's got to be entertained. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's cool, though. Like, I like how you said you kind of, you got into horror late, but you really do love it. Like, what did yes. you take that route as far as going into horror? Basically, I... I I, I've also never done a Western yet. I'm really dying to do a Western as well. And when Corbin Timbrook um, asked me to be in this film, Blood Ranch, I, I looked at the script and I thought, oh my God, what a cool character. Because you think I'm terrible and evil, but then you realize why I had to do what I did. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, the character has a full arc. And um, I know it was... Um, it shot on location and uh, I knew a lot of the other actors in it and I was just so excited. And that was the first one I did. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, I'm glad you joined the horror community now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I'm there too. It's, it's such a friendly community. Like I was saying earlier, and even like with, um, well, when they, whenever they do come back to horror conventions, those are, I've probably had the most fun at those things. I, I love all conventions and all autograph shows. I've never had a bad experience. It's always been just sheer delight and joy. And I always learn something like bizarre about movies I've been in that I didn't even know about from the fans that come. It's great. The first autograph show I ever did was David Dakota organized this thing at this really crazy wild bookstore called Dark Delicacies in Burbank, right outside of LA. And he, um, he uh, set it up for all, it was a scream queen thing. And I couldn't believe it. It was like for the first hour, it seemed like really slow for me. And I'm like, well, I don't care. I'm having so much fun. And all of a sudden a fan came from New Zealand just to see me. And he had little uh, postcards of every single movie I ever did okay. for me to sign. It was crazy i couldn't believe it and that was my indoctrination to the autograph show world <laughs> that's really cool that's really cool because it's just like holy crap you've literally seen all my work <laughs> and, and that he came i mean he flew from new zealand it was like whoa okay <laughs> that's great that's a true fan right there that's yes a, definitely that's cool though and i'm i'm real I, like i said i'm real happy that you're in the in the horror genre now and I can tell you're having fun with it and you'll see how the more you're in it and the more kind you go to, you'll see how crazy the fans are in a good way and how much they love just. Absolutely. And like we, I mean, there's multiple movies we all love, but then there's just like certain movies that certain fans will just love and just gravitate towards and know everything about the Easter eggs, hidden, all that hidden stuff. And just like you were saying a few minutes ago about how, Fans said something about certain movies that you were in that you like. I didn't know. Yes, that. I didn't know that. That's and, I, cool. and I'm really excited. I'm crossing my fingers that uh, it's set to start August fourth. Um, I'm going to be working with Jim Winorski, mm -hmm. who is a, a great old time director, and I've never worked with him before. And one of my best girlfriends, Becky LeBeau, is also in it. And um, we're doing Bigfoot or Bust. <laughs> And that's all I'm going to say. You said you love the comedy kind of horror things. Well, I think this is going to fulfill everyone's desires that loves that kind of movie. And I can't wait to do it. That title alone is just like... Racist. Isn't it just too... It's too perfect. I know. Yes, yes that's going to be... That's going to be entertaining. I can tell. That yes, too. it will. And then... Do you have a favorite movie you've done so far in the horror? In horror or not necessarily? Oh, um, I, and I really mean this, and I'm not trying to be coy. 
every film I do is a favorite in some sense because of certain things that happen or the way I grow as an actor or people I meet or places I get to, you know, shoot in traveling all over the world. Um, it's, they're all, they all have a place in my heart, every single one of them. Um, uh, it's so funny. You just made me think when you said, is there, cause I just heard about, um, I'm starring in this sci-fi series um, with Lorenzo Lamas and it's called Invaded and it's Walker Cable Productions and they're in Houston and we, we shot outside of Houston in this beautiful little town, um, historic town called Conroe and I've been so worried about them because they had that horrible surge there of the virus and everything and luckily they just posted we're about ready to start airing so it's they're starting um, first just in Houston in the Houston market and it's going to be on, let me see if I can wrote down what it's called it is on uh kb kv gt or gosh i can't read my own writing kv i think it's kv gt or qt but it's channel 21 in houston and we shot a bunch of episodes and hopefully we're going to do more and it'll probably be streaming like all over the place after it gets out there too Stream isn't isn't it awesome with this whole streaming thing versus movies back in the day? You either had you either had to have cable, the pay per view channels, or go out and buy it like on VHS. This is even way before DVD. I know access is so fabulous to me. There's still nothing like sharing the movie experience in a movie theater. And when this whole thing, the quarantine and the lockdowns and the closures started, I was kind of bummed because I mean I'm starring in a bunch of films that all were going to have a theatrical release, which is now postponed. But mm -hmm. I'm thrilled that everyone gets to see it so easily now, and. Um, it's just still a great thing for me to have my work out there on so many different um, platforms to see it. So, yeah, it's great. <laughs> it is. I, I love it. I mean, I do. I do enjoy the movie experience mainly for horror movies. Everything else, I tend to fall asleep. I have no idea. Why. <laughs> and like, like me, my wife and I'll go to a movie and I'll be into it. Like even like the Marvel movies, cause they're like two and a half, three hours long. I'm just, I just end up dozing off. She'll watch the whole thing. But it's, horror movies, I love movies so much. I watch the whole thing. I've never fallen asleep in a film ever. I've never, I think I've walked out on one film ever, even a film that I'm not like loving. I'll still watch it. And mm -hmm. I am a popcorn fanatic. I love popcorn more than anything. So to have a huge bucket in front of me and just watch a movie is, is sheer heaven. See, I do. I usually get like candy or nachos or something. My wife, of course, popcorn. Yeah. But um, yeah, like horror movies, I don't, as far as in theaters, I don't fall asleep during. At home, it all depends on what I'm doing. If I'm sitting down on the couch watching a movie, nine times out of 10, I'm up. But if I'm laying down in bed, <laughs> Well, that's funny you said that. I I have not had a television in my bedroom since I was in college. I think. Really? I, I yeah. I never watch. I only read in bed. Oh. Um. I I never. Yeah. I never watch TV in bed. That's funny. That's I'm gonna sip my coffee now. <laughs> that's re that's really interesting that you say that because the majority of the people that I know have. You know, TVs in their bedroom. And it's I know. A normal thing you lay down, watch TV till you doze off, and turn the TV off or whatever. I'm, I I I also sleep really hard and soundly, so I've never been one of those people that needed a TV to go to sleep either, or like a lot of people do. I think yeah, I'm I'm that type of like I I, I don't know why I have to have it on, but I have it on, watch something, fall asleep, wake up, turn the TV off, and then kind of fall asleep a little while after. It's but a book makes a lot of sense, though. I mean, as far as if you didn't have a TV in your room, you're just like, you know what? Let me just crack open this book. Because the book, you enjoy reading it, but your eyes just get tired after a few pages. Exactly. I have to set this down. You set it down and you fall asleep. So true. That's so cool, though. That's actually, that's really cool, though. Just because I'm just like, damn. <laughs> I just try it. <laughs> I, should. I mean, as far as the reading part, I should. Because I used to, I do enjoy reading. I used to read a book. Not a full book, but, you know, start reading before when I'm getting ready to lay down, just kind of read something and put it to the side. It's, it's really therapeutic for your brain. It just makes you kind of zone out. Because um, I forgot who said this. Someone, I think it was a, it wasn't a writer who said it either. I think it was more like a um, historian or something said that 
reading is the only activity that you truly do that is completely unique to you, for, for your brain, for like something to stimulate your brain. There's nothing that else that can come between you and that book as far as how you're perceiving it and how you're, um, how you're interpreting it. Because a film, they, they say there's so many other things, like there's the sound, there's the lighting, yep. but just the, reading a book, yeah, it's different. <laughs> I, I agree with that. I can see where you're coming from with that. And it's just like, especially if it's a really good book. Yes. And you can kind of almost visual. It's Exactly. Like, you can truly visualize. go off in your own imagination and create any world you want. <laughs> the funny thing about that, though, like for me is... Obviously, we all know the books are usually better than the movies, but I did. I was reading um, Pet Cemetery. Yes. And then I seen the new one, and I was so disappointed because I was. Like, that's that's Stephen King, right? Yep. Yeah, Stephen King is very interesting. Um, he writes so visually, mm -hmm. and every once in a while, you'll have something like Misery that to me just comes like it almost like pops the book even further. Mm -hmm. But most of the time. Yeah, uh, the book is really hard to capture in a film. It is. It really, it really is. And I mean, if I, I get they can't, you can't capture the book in any film. I got right. it in a completely, but I just wish for the newer Pet Cemetery they would have taken more from the book and kind of just right. I haven't seen the new one. Yeah, I won't spoil it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, at the same time with it, I read it as well yes. and then i seen it chapter one it chapter two and i know they didn't take everything from the book but certain things that they pulled from the book it was easy for me to point out in the movie like oh i remember reading this in the book or this and i'm i'm like that's it's just awesome right. getting that experience right damn i guess i gotta start reading books more see what you did <laughs> <laughs> see i i inspired you to do something great i gotta start reading books more now <laughs> get back to my reading because i do like i said i really do enjoy it it's just I can't even say I don't have time to do it because I'm lying. I'm quarantined. Right. It's like we all know we have time. Every one of us right now. <laughs> time to read. I've got to set aside maybe an hour or two a day to just yes. crack a book open. So maybe I'll start right. reading that soon. <laughs> What's your favorite book? Or do you have one? Uh, whichever. Uh, well, I just read something that was astounding. It's, it's a biography of Coco Chanel. But... Um, it reads like a novel, literally, like it reads like a Russian novel. And I guess my favorite novel ever would either be Dr. Zhivago or Anna Karenina. Wow. Those are my two favorite novels. I, lo I love those Russian authors, <laughs> but there's so many. Oh my God. There's so many great books. So oh, many. Oh yeah. Like me, me right now. I'd have to go just with the genre of horror. If I choose my favorite, it's probably Stephen. It's a uh, Christine. Oh yeah. Yeah. As of right now, it's those two, but I'm, I enjoy biographies too, as well. Especially if it's somebody that I'm interested in, like a fan of I'm like, it's just cool to kind of read about their life and yes, very entertaining. It is very entertaining. <clears throat> is that something you would do? Put a book out, a biography out or have everyone's you? always telling me that I should, write a book because I have had this insanely amazing life because I grew up in Palm Springs in Hawaii. And my father um, was a sportscaster and ra radio announcer for 35 years. He was the voice, he was the first voice of the Angels, uh, the baseball team. And then he was the voice of the Bob Hope Classic for like 30 years. And I actually interviewed amazing people um, while I was in high school, every major tennis player you could imagine, from Bjorn Borg to Ellie Nastasi to Jimmy Connors to Rod Laver. Um, and that was when I was in high school because I had such easy access because I was this cute little girl just running around the tennis tournament. And my dad had the connection of working for CBS Radio. And so I had a lot of interviews even in high school. Then I, when I was in college, I interviewed um, so many insanely great uh, musicians when I went to Arizona State because they played this fabulous stadium in uh, in Arizona where I went to college and I interviewed Marvin Gaye, the, the Ohio Players, Bruce Springsteen, the OJs. Um, it was crazy. It was great. <laughs> so I do love to, to write and I love um, 
those were all on air, but I think a couple of them actually made it to newspapers too. I did some newspaper articles, but yeah, I've met amazing people. I have, I've so far this life has been a fabulous one. So one day I probably will do a book of my journey in Hollywood because I did come here at 19 years old and oh, wow. pretty lucky of the people I've been surrounded by and have worked with and that have loved me and, and supported my career. So yeah, one day I think I will write a book. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. And again, that would be one I'd like to read. And <laughs> Good. <laughs> then you'll you'll motivate me. It would be just to see how your career's changed, especially again because you said recent. Not I don't know how recent, but recently came into the horror thing and just yes. Well, it's, it's probably it's probably been about um, I think it's been about ten ten years now that I did my first one. That's good though. 10 years. And I like, I like how you said you like to try different things. So like, so you, now you want to try a Western film out instead yes, of, yes, definitely. You, wanna, you don't want to stick to just the same genre throughout your whole career. It's like, let me, let me try this. If, if I like exactly. It. And, and in the same token, I love doing drama as much as I do love, love doing comedy. So mm -hmm. to me, it's one and the same. It's just all about the truth and all about, the honesty of your work as an actor. And it's funny because the most brilliant comedy has an element of tragedy in it because the old line, you have to play comedy straight. So that, that fine line of what's funny and what's tragic is when it's captured, I think is some of the most brilliant comedy we've ever had. I agree. Excuse me. I agree with that. Um, I guess we're getting kind of to the end of the show. If there's any other things you want to promote or mention, you feel free to do I that. I think I've talked about just about everything. Um, oh, I, I just joined Cameo, which is a really cool app that you can um, contact your favorite celebrities and ask them to do personal greetings for you, like if, uh, or if you want to give it as a gift, like if you want me to sing happy birthday to somebody and say whatever you want me to say. It's a really cool app. And, um, and, and especially we want to connect so much and there's no autograph shows right now. So um, I'm on Cameo and um, you can also find out everything that I'm doing and what's out there on IMDB, the international movie database. And I have my own private Facebook page called Lisa London fan. And also um, I was, one of the lead singers of a group that um, called the pinups and the pinups has its own page too. And we had a big uh, run of success in the eighties and that's called the pinups live also on Facebook. And then my Instagram account, if you want to follow me is Lisa London LA is my handle on there. Awesome. That's awesome. And thank you so much for coming on. I greatly appreciate you coming on. I had a great time. Me too. And everybody, <laughs> Go ahead and follow her. Again, thank you for coming on. And uh, hang on one second. I just want to hit. Where's my mouse? Pad?